There we go. Hey, so uh, I assume every one of you may have been using some kind of software packet manager, um, APT on, on Debian or PIP or Poetry for Python, Maven and the likes. And so what what is the essence of what these package managers do? They fetch package, they install them, but they also try to find what is the correct version. So each version uh, may need to satisfy constraints expressed by other packages. For instance, install log4j for Maven, from Maven version 2.0 or higher. It's wonderful because basically these tools helps us pick random and verified versions very efficiently and very quickly. Um, now, if you think about CVEs, they hopefully come also with an assertion of which range of versions is vulnerable for a given package vulnerability. And they're expressed in a very similar way. For instance, this is not a complete version range, but they can be fairly complex and involved. You have a CVE and it's this version, but not this version. This variant is not affected and, and so on and so on. As a side note, by the way, many vulnerability databases don't agree on what the version range that's vulnerable for a given CV. That's a bit maddening, but that's what it is. Um, so another thing that's called package URL, it's, it's a way that's used nowadays by many um, software composition analysis tools and SBOMs to identify a package. It's very simple. It's, a, it's like a URL with a PKG scheme. Then you say, what is the type of package, the ecosystems like NVM, NPM, Maven, and the likes, the name and the version. There's no more than that, but it proves to be super useful and a good alternative in the most common case to CPEs, the command package enumeration, which is the, the thing that's used in the national vulnerability database. I'm very proud. It's actually something that started on uh, uh, the project I maintain, and it's not being used pretty much industry-wide. Um, <clears throat> and it's been noted by some analysts at the Linux Foundation. Um, now I'm putting yet another stuff, and you're probably thinking, what, what is he talking about? He's putting all this stuff, this in completely random. Uh, bear with me. Um, a new spec, mini spec called Verse, for version range, which is a way to express the notation of version range, be they for functional constraints of dependencies or version range for vulnerable version range, uh, which is part of uh, um, the package URL specification. Very simple too. You say, I have a version range for some NPM, and here it says, Pick version one two three, or some version superior to two zero, uh, but has to be inferior to five. And uh, the way, the point is to be able to express this in in a syntax that's the same across all the package managers. You'd be surprised the variety and the the, the minute details that exist between each of these. By the way. So let me introduce yet another tool, Python Inspector which is a tool that works like Python pip. Actually, it uses pip as a library, but what it does, it doesn't install package, it just does dependency resolution. You give it constraints, and you get a resolve tree out. Um, it has the peculiar uh, nature to use package URL pearls and verse, both an input and, and internally. It has many use, but uh, one of the use I want to discuss today is um, in the context of vulnerabilities. No, yet another stuff now, vulnerable code. It's a vulnerability database, so nothing special about it, except it's keyed by package URLs. And it's more actually a database of package with their non-vulnerabilities than a vulnerability database in a way. It also keeps tracks of the version range for each of the vulnerable ranges. All right, we're almost there. Now, <laughs> 
if you could blend together the constraints of functional dependencies that you express uh, in your package management environment with the range of known vulnerable dependencies together, and you inject that in the dependency resolver, you eventually get something which I hope will be standard in the future in any package management client, which is non-vulnerable dependency resolution. And we've done a proof of concept using uh, this Python inspector tool and the database we talked about. And if we put everything together, literally we're getting feeds of vulnerabilities on the one end, uh, feeds of package versions. They're being converted in terms of range in verse and which package they relate to as package URLs. And they're brought together to eventually try to avoid having stupid package that are still vulnerable. As, as a data point on why this is important, by some measure, there's still about 30% of uh, installation of log4j, which are still vulnerable versions. And we're almost two years, two years out now from uh, the log4j debacle. And that's it. <laughs>